Okay, guys, so this is a class opener, but this these exact type of questions, at least two of them are going to be on Monday's 100-point test. So you need to know how to create the system reading a word problem, all right? And they will be selected from one of the ones we've done, either our homework or maybe even this class opener. So again, it says a class of students with some student or with some adults, parents, chaperones, and teachers went to the museum. A total of 36 tickets were purchased. So here's a fact that a total of 36 tickets were purchased, okay? Adult tickets cost $8, student tickets cost $5. The total amount of money spent was $231. So we're gonna have to write two types of equations. One equation is based on the number of items. So in other, in other words, the number of tickets, right? Sometimes we're uh, dealing with number of tickets, sometimes we're dealing with number of fruit. Uh, so it depends on what type of item you're dealing with. Right here we're dealing with museum tickets. So let's, let's talk about an equation that represents the number of tickets. Well, do we know how many adult tickets were sold? No. So what are we going to put? A, right? Do we know how many student tickets were sold? No? So we're going to put S or C or whatever letter you want. You know, I want to put S for students. I know that whatever that A number is, whatever the adult number is, and whatever the student number is, I know that if I add them together, I will have a total, it says up here, a total of 36 tickets. So guys, you need to, this is, if, you don't, if you're not able to read, it, read this and write it as an equation, forget it, you're going you're to miss it. And if you miss two problems on the test, that's already, you can't get an A. You have to be able to get these two right to get an A. Anyway, we need now create an equation based on what? If you ever see this symbol right here, money, you got to make an equation based on money, right? So how much money was an adult ticket? Eight dollars, right? So let's put eight dollars times each adult. Because if ten adults went, that's a total of eighty dollars. Eight times ten is eighty, right? Uh, five adults went, that'd be uh, forty dollars because five times eight is forty. So yeah, you got to put eight times a, which is simply just eight a. Okay, how about students? How much does a student cost? Five, so we're going to put five times s, so plus five times s. You could just put five s equals how much money did they actually spend total? Two hundred thirty-one, right there, right? So let's put two thirty-one, and that is an equation based on money. Okay, so you're always going to do an equation based on the number of whatever you're dealing with, and another equation based on money. That is, if you're dealing with money. Anyway. We have a system right here. We want to solve this system. Uh, you need to decide whether you want to cancel out A's or S's. Which one looks easier to cancel out? S. S. Okay, so if I wanted to cancel out the S, I need to multiply that top equation by what in order for it to cancel with a positive 5S? You have to multiply it by negative 5. So let's put a negative 5, and let's distribute, and I'll get negative 5A. I'll get minus 5S. And I will get negative 5 times 36, use a calculator, is negative 180. Now the bottom equation, we're going to leave it exactly the way it is. 8a plus 5s equals 231. And now we are able to combine the lines and eliminate the, a, the s values. So when we combine negative 5 plus 8, that is 3 of those a's. We said that the S's eliminate, and uh, use a calculator to be si safe. 231 uh, minus 180, or negative 180 plus 231. Either way, you're going to get an answer of 51. So we have this simple one-step black equation right here. 3A equals 51. So that really saying is 3 times something equals 51. Let's divide by 3 to get rid of that multiplication of 3, which is due to one side and due to the other side. And you will get A equaling... 17. So if you say that the answer is 17 and you put it on the answer spot, guess what? It's wrong. Yeah, because it says how many students went on this trip. So we know the adults. The adults were 17. So we're going to plug it back into the top equation. 17 adults plus how many students gave you a total of 36? Let's write that out. 
uh, 17 adults uh, plus how many students gave us a total of 36. Let's solve this by subtracting 17, subtracting 17 um, on a calculator, 36, take away 17 is 19. So S equals 19. So 19 students is the answer. So on your answer sheet, on the test, all you have to put is 19 because that's what I'm asking for. Now, maybe on the test I give you this exact question, but I don't ask for students. I ask for parents or adult tickets. Then it would be 17. So you've got to be paying attention carefully to what I'm asking you for on each of these word problems. Let's try one more down here. This one is a little bit harder. Um, do you guys have calculators? Uh, I want to pause it. Come get some calculators. All right, so once again, if you ever see some money, you know you're going to have to create an equation based on money, okay? But you also have to think about what you're dealing with. Are we dealing with adult tickets, student tickets? Are we dealing with Flaming Hot Cheetos and Takis? What, what, what's the item that we're dealing with? Apples and, Apples and oranges, which are both fruit, right? So we're going to have to create an equation based on the number of uh, fruit in this case. Uh, on the previous one, it was based on the number of tickets, right? So you're always going to be making an equation based on the number of whatever you're dealing with and also money with regards to like how much each one of those costs and the total cost. So let's, let's make an equation of the number representing the number of fruit. So we know that we're dealing with um, apples and oranges. I mean, it's inside a bag of fruit. There's a bag of fruit and it has a total of 12 apples and oranges. But we don't know how many apples, we don't know how many oranges. But I do know that whatever the apple number is, plus whatever the number of oranges is, it's going to give us a total of 12. So that is an equation based on the number of fruit. Is everybody clear with that? Yeah. Just like, just like up here, guys. Up here, we made an equation based on the number of tickets, adult tickets, student tickets, total of 36 tickets. Down here, it's a different situation, but the same uh, idea, number of fruit, apples plus oranges is a total of 12 fruit, okay? Um, now, let's make an equation based on money, okay? So how much does each apple cost? It says up here that each apple costs $1.75. So we need to put 1.75 times each of those apples. And then we have plus, uh, how much does the oranges cost? The oranges cost 75 cents. That's what it says. Each orange costs 75 cents. So we're going to put 0.75 with an O right there. So, uh, I mean, this makes sense, right? If I say each apple costs $1.75 and I have 10 apples, then I will have made $17.50, right? Or I would have spent $17.50 on 10 apples. That's why I put 175 times each of those apples. We put 75 cents times each of those oranges. Now we know the total cost of this bag. How much does a bag cost? $14. It says right here, the total cost of the bag is $14. So there is my system right there. Now a lot of people freak out with this because there's decimals, right? Now we know, or we should know, that if we want to get rid of the decimals, all we have to do is multiply it by 100. Okay, let me put this in a little cloud because this is how I'm going to modify it. I'm just letting myself know that I'm going to multiply the equation by 100. That way this decimal will move two spaces this way. It'll move two spaces this way. And this one that's at 14 that doesn't have a decimal, there's really a decimal right here. I need to multiply 14 times 100 which will give me 1400. That's, that is, I have to move it also two spaces that way. So my new bottom modified equation will be 175 instead of 1.75 it's 175a 175a plus if i move this guy two over it'll be 75 oranges 75 o and then 14 times 100 equals 1400 so there's my new bottom modified 1400 equals 1400 now the top equation oh yeah let's not get confused this is not 750 that's 75 oranges. Let me put that uh, orange in red. Okay. That'd be cool if I had the color orange. Anyway, 
uh, the top equation. I'm going to modify it, but I want something to cancel. What do you think you could cancel, guys? Uh, A's or O's? O's. O's seem pretty easy. All I have to do is multiply this top one O by what? To get a negative 75 O. Negative 75. So let's multiply the top one by negative 75, giving us a new top equation. Instead of A, it's going to be negative 75 times A, which is negative 75A. Instead of the regular plus O, it's going to be minus 75O. And then it's going to be equals, and what is 75 times 12? I would use a calculator. And that's negative 75 times a positive 12. That's going to be negative 900. Are you with me? So the hard part is creating the system. After that is moving the decimal over two places by multiplying everything by 100. And I say everything, even that 14 has to become 1400. And then the top one, now you need to modify the top one to get something to cancel. We multiply everything by negative 75, so these guys will cancel. Now we could actually focus in on this system that's ready to rock. So let's combine the lines. Negative 75A plus 175A, that's simply 100. A. These guys completely eliminate, and we still have the equal sign that comes down, and nine, negative 900 plus 1400, if you do it on a calculator, it's 500. So I need to get rid of that 100 times in front of the A. Let's divide by 100, cancels, divide by 100, A equals 5. What does that mean? That there's 5 apples in this bag of fruit. Are they asking for apples? No. no. I mean, so they might on the test, and you'd be done. You'd put A equals 5, 5 apples, and that's it. But right here it says how many oranges are in the bag. So let's go back and plug in the 5 into the top easy equation of 5 right there. 5 plus oranges equals 12. So we're going to have 5 plus, I don't know the number of oranges, but I know the total of the bag or the total of fruit inside of the bag is 12. So this is an O, not a 0. So let's get rid of that uh, 5 by subtracting 5, subtracting 5. You're going to have the oranges is really 7. There's 7 oranges. So the correct answer here is that there's 7 oranges. All right. There will be two of these guys on the test on Monday. Okay, And, you're, and on these, it's always the same thing. You're creating an equation based on the number of items that you're dealing with, maybe number of fruit, maybe number of tickets, uh, and then you're also going to make a, an equation based on money. And that's not always the case, but I'm letting you know that's how it's going to be on the test. Let's jump to these next two questions. We're actually going back and reviewing stuff from semester one. Now this is very, very, very important, okay, because we need to know it for this next section. So let's focus in on this first one. Do you guys remember how to graph with y equals mx plus b? Yes. All right. So what is the m value here? Two. two. And what's the b value? Four. What do we always start with when we graph a line? The, the, y the b value, which is the y-intercept, which is positive 4. So I know that it crosses at 4. Let's all go to the y-axis. Here's the y-axis, the one that goes up and down. Go to the value of 4. Put a dot right here, guys. That's your, your y-intercept value. Now, from that point, I need to rise and run according to my slope. Now, even if it's not a fraction, you make it a fraction by putting it over 1. So you need to go, are we going to be going up or down? Down. down. Up. Up. Yeah, up. Up. Now, some people are saying down because you're like, oh, if you go up, you're going to be off the graph. It's okay. All right? So let's go up because it's positive, up 2. So you're going to go up 1, 2, you're off the graph. And then you're going to run how many? How much are you going to run? One. one, right? One. So you got to run one. So you're going to run this way. One. Put a dot out here. It is off of the graph. And it, it's not acceptable to leave it like that. So we are going to use the backwards pattern to bring it back the other way. What do I mean backwards pattern? Instead of going up two and over one, let's go backwards. Over one, down two. Over one, down two. And we could continue going to the left one and down two, to the left one, down two, to make it as long as we want. Now the other detail is, or the other two details, that's one of the three things you need to do. 
The next question is, is this going to be a solid line or a dotted line? Dotted. 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 No because there's no line. There's no line underneath this. If there's a solid line underneath it, there's going to be a solid line. If there's no solid line underneath it, it's going to be dotted. So let's put some more dots or dashes between the dots. Now the final touch, the icing on the cake, is do you shade this side of the dotted line or do you shade this side of the dotted line? Now there's two ways of thinking about this. One way is to test the point zero, zero. So if you were to plug in zero for X, zero for Y, and it works, then you would shade in that side because it is an answer. If you test 0, 0, 0 for x, 0 for y, and it doesn't work, then this is not an answer, which means that your answers must be on the other side. Okay? So let's do that. If you test 0 for y and 0 for x, it's going to say 0 is less than 2 times 0 plus 4. Well, we know that 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 4 is 4. So this would read 0 is less than 4. Is that true or false? True. 0 is less than 4, which means that this guy is an answer, which means that all your answers are going to be over here on this side. So that's why you would shade in this side of the line. Now, is there a shortcut to that? Yes. Let's go back and show you the shortcut or remind you of the shortcut. What does this symbol say when it's in slope-intercept form? It says less than. Now, is less than with regards to y, is it up above or is it below? It's below. So if you look at this line, of course, you're going to be shading in the area below the line, not above the line. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's a shortcut. If you like the shortcut, you could use it. If you don't like it, go ahead and test the point zero, zero and figure out what, shi what side to shade with zero, zero. With zero, zero. What shy? Shy, shy, shy. Ah, she, shy, shy. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, how about this guy? Where does it cross the y-axis? One. one. What do I do from that point? Up one, down one? Up one, down one? No, up one. Up one? Over to the right one. Okay, because the slope really is up one, over one, right? So you're going to rise one, run one. So that's going to be a dot right there. And you could keep rising one, running one. And you could go backwards with that pattern. And then now let's ask ourselves, is this going to be a solid line or a dotted line? Solid. solid because it has a solid line underneath the inequality. If there is no solid line, yeah, it's not going to be a solid line. But there is a solid line underneath your inequality. It has to be a solid line underneath your inequality. I mean, as a line, solid line. So now we need to shade in either the bottom of this line or the top part of this line. What's the shortcut? What does it say? It says greater than, which means the top part of this line. So the above part is what we're going to be shading. Why? Because it says greater than. And greater than is above. If you say who's taller, who has a greater height? It's the one that's higher up. So yeah, greater is up, less than is down. Okay, so that's a shortcut. And that's a pretty long enough video for this class opener. Now, again, word problems, you're going to have two of them on the test Monday. These guys, you're going to have two of them also. But it's not going to be asked exactly like this. We're going to ask it as a system of inequalities, which we're going to do on the next video.